welcome to my channel. My name is Sara and I make videos about thrifting, styling secondhand and vintage fashion along with thrift flips and how-to videos like the one that you're watching right now. And in today's video I want to show you two different ways that you can cut and fray denim jeans. Now the first fraying technique is going to result in a more raw and jagged edge whereas the second fraying technique is still going to be a raw hem but it's going to be a lot neater than the first one. So let's head straight on into the thrift clip. Now the first pair of jeans that we will be working with are these really sort of Y2K three quarter length men's style jeans. And I like the wash on the denim, but I think they are way too long and would look better as regular shots. So because of that, we will be cropping them. And to do that, you're going to start off by figuring out at which length you want to crop the trousers. In this case, the back pockets go down quite far, so I'm going to have to make sure that I keep the back pockets intact. And then you take the jeans and you fold them in half so that the legs are overlapping. Then, using a pair of fabric scissors, go ahead and just cut straight across the pants. And make sure that you cut both the legs at the same time so that they end up at the same length. And if you are a little bit uncertain about which length you want, then start off with a longer length. And if you find that they are still too long, then fold them back up and cut off some more because it's always easier to remove fabric than to attach it if you end up cutting off too much. And once you are pleased with the length of your new shorts, then we're going to go ahead and start the first frame technique. Now, when it comes to the first frame technique, there are a few things that you are going to need. Now, the first thing is obviously your cut-off shorts. And the second thing that you're going to need is some sort of serrated knife. And I'm just using a regular one from my kitchen. And then you're also going to need some sort of mat that you can use the knife on. So in my case, I've just taken a regular cutting board from my kitchen. But if you have like a large piece of wood or uh, some piece of plywood that you don't need to be careful with, then go ahead and use that as well. The next two pieces are optional, but they could be of help if you want to. And that is a seam ripper and a pair of tweezers. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to take the cutting board and then we're going to insert it into the leg of the pants. And I've just realised that my cutting board smells of onions. So, um, yeah, that's fun. And then basically what you want to do is to take your serrated knife and just start slashing away at the lower hem. So if you have any built-in aggression from the past year, uh, which I'm guessing that we all have because COVID has been a... Take the COVID aggression out on the pants. And as you can see here, with just a few small cuts, I'm already starting to get some fraying at the edge. And as you can see, I've just been slashing away at the shorts with the knife for about a minute and there's already a huge difference between the two different legs. And if you want to, you can go ahead and use the tweezers to just pull out some of the strings just to create a bit of a more jagged effect. And the same can be done with the seam ripper if you just want to go in and pick out a few threads to move the distressing slightly upwards so it's not only at the bottom edge. And once you're happy with how one side looks, then just continue working your way around the hem of the leg. And once one leg is done, then just move on to the next one. Now, the amount of distressing that you add to the shorts is obviously up to you. You could take this distressing technique way further and really trash them up. Also, just bear in mind that when you throw these in the washing machine later on, they will continue to fray. So if you make them like crazy extreme frayed, then they might end up unravelling quite a lot when you throw them in the washing machine. And of course the distressing doesn't only have to be done on the bottom raw hem of the shorts. You could add this distressing technique anywhere you like, so perhaps you want to distress a pocket or add some distressing on the sides. Just be mindful of where your butt and underwear will be so that you don't make holes and your underwear pokes through. Unless that's a style that you want, then for all means, go ahead. And once you feel done with the distressing, you could either just go ahead and leave all these 
pieces of string that are hanging out or if you think that they are a little bit too much then you can just use a pair of scissors and trim some of them off. Uh, that is what I'm going to do. And there you go, a pair of cropped, distressed and frayed denim shorts. Whilst I was cleaning up now after the first thrift clip, um, I just realised that I forgot to say these pieces of fabric that you cut off from the bottom of the trousers that you were cropping, don't throw these pieces away because they are super good to have if you perhaps are mending a hole in your jeans in the future and you need something to patch it up with, or you could create something else fun with these. So don't throw the ends away, you can use them for something else. Okay, so I have cleaned up from the first thrift clip, got on myself a big glass of water because it is very hot outside today. And now let's move on to the second thrift clip and the second fraying technique. So for this technique, I'm going to be using a pair of trousers that were already cut when I got them. So I won't be showing you the cropping part again, we're just going to be focusing on the fraying technique. Now, I really like these trousers and I have worn them so much since I got them. However, since the bottom edge of them isn't hemmed, they have frayed quite a lot. And I know that some people like the frayed style with lots of threads hanging down. However, when I have these loose threads hanging around my ankle, it really, really annoys me. So instead, I want to create a frayed hem that is a lot neater and that won't continue fraying. And to do this, we're going to be using a sewing machine. I think you could do it by hand, but if you have a sewing machine, then this is going to become so much easier. And the general technique behind this fraying technique is that we are just going to straight stitch along the bottom of the pants to prevent further fraying. And I realise that I will be demonstrating this fraying technique on a long pair of trousers, but you could of course do it on a cropped pair of shorts as well. So I could have easily used this technique on the shorts that we just cropped. So let's start up the sewing machine and get going. So first of all you need to choose some thread that is a very similar colour to the pants that you will be working with. So what you want to do now is to put your sewing machine on a straight stitch and then try to sew next to where the current fraying is. And if you have a raw hem that you've just cropped then maybe like four or five millimetres in from the edge so that there will be some fabric that you can use for the fraying. And then go ahead and do this on both of the legs of the trousers. Once you have finished your straight stitch all along the bottom of the trousers, then you can go ahead and put your sewing machine away and instead bring out a pair of tweezers or a seam ripper. Okay, so what we want to do now is basically, well, in your trousers, in your pair of jeans, you have threads going in two directions. You have those going along the leg and those going across the leg. And what we want to do now is that below the straight stitch that we just added, so on the cropped side, we want to remove all of the thread that is going across, so to say, so that we only leave the strings that are going down. And that will create a very fuzzy and raw hem that doesn't fray. So as you can see here on these trousers, these white strings that are hanging out here, they are the ones that originally went across in the trousers and we want to remove all those so we only have the ones that have been going down along the leg. And the best way to do that is basically to use your tweezers or a seam ripper and go in ever so carefully and just plucking them out and make sure that you don't pluck the straight stitch that you just added because that is the stop that will prevent the trousers from fraying upwards. So as you can see here I am removing the white threads that are going across and just leaving the blue threads that are coming from the top and going down. And this is something that is going to take quite a while so I will catch up with you when I have worked my way around both of the legs. So today I have showed you how you can crop a pair of denim trousers into a pair of shorts and I also showed you two different ways that you can fray a raw hem. 
Now these two fraying techniques are very different as one ends up looking a bit more trashed and one is a bit more neat. And I'm super curious which style you prefer, so let me know in the comments below which style you will be trying out. And if you have any further questions about how I did my fraying or cropping, then also just let me know in the comments below and I will try to help you. And before I show you the before and after clips of how the fraying and cropping turned out, I just want to say a big thank you to you for watching this far into the video, and if you found it helpful or you enjoyed it in any way, then please give it a like, as it really helps me out. And if you do enjoy thrifting or thrift with me's and thrift clips like this one, then do consider subscribing to my channel, because I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers before the end of the summer, and it would be super fun and make me very happy if you came and joined us. So with that being said, take care of each other and I will see you in my next video. And here are the before and after clips. Bye. And just a curious question, do you like my hair today? Because I tried something new that I haven't done before and I really like how it turned out. So I've just popped in like this large clip. And I just think that it's perfect for summer. I really like it. If you don't know, I cut my hair in September and since then I've been trying out new hairstyles for this more shorter hair because I had really long hair before. And I really like this one. I think I'm going to wear it more. Bye.